The program on January 8th is going to be really exciting. Uh, I put this all together and it's going to go through all kinds of musical periods. So we're opening with uh, Joseph Haydn's piano trio, actually it's nicknamed the Gypsy Trio. He wrote it after he left Hungary. Where he was under the services of his uh, patronage of his count. And it's one of the uh, landmarks of his chamber music works yeah, because it just has such a different style to it. it it's like, um, it's very classical in form. Um, there's, there's slight differences uh, what he does in his own Haydn-esque way. But the third movement in particular is basically a gypsy dance and it kind of surprises you because you don't expect that the whole time. You just think, okay, here's the third movement. It's probably a rondo or something. And, and it is. It's just this gypsy rondo. So it really gets you hoot and hollering on there. And, it's, and people love it and it has, ends with a big bang on it. Um, then as a, a slight break, uh, the next piece is going to be a duo. Uh, I, I will take a break. Uh, there'll be a piece by Katie. Uh, McLean and Kim Hankins, and they're going to do a Mozart duo. So rare will audi rarely do audiences hear a piece that is written for violin and viola. And then they're off the stage, and then uh, the trio comes back out. This time, um, Luke Hill is going to be playing, and he's the principal second violin in the AZ Phil. And so we're going to do uh, Schoenfeld's... Uh, Paul Schoenfeld's Cafe Music. It's actually written in 1987. He's still living, and he's actually a professor of composition now at the University of Michigan. Uh, it was basically a cafe he played in, so this, he put these three movements together, and you hear everything in it. You hear ragtime, Hollywood. It actually says it right in the score. Um, you hear Broadway. You hear uh, this... Um, uh, ragtime, you hear, you hear this like bebop jazz, you hear this stride the, where the pianist takes the left hand and just goes so, these big jumps back and forth at super speed and it's just fun for everyone, fun to listen to um, when it comes well together and that's, that's a great way to end the second, uh, the, the first half before the intermission. Then the, we come back, all five of us, uh, uh, end the program with the Schumann Piano Quintet. So all five of us are going to be on stage, and this piece was written in 1842. Uh, Robert Schumann wrote it for his wife, Clara Schumann, who is also a professional pianist. And interestingly, that he, uh, when he was going to premiere it, uh, have Clara premiere it with the group, she fell ill. And so uh, of all people, Felix Mendelssohn popped in at the last second and sight read it which is amazing. <laughs> and so on top of sight reading it for the whole concert, uh, he came off of stage and started saying that, uh, Robert, you need to rewrite the third movement. It was too easy for people. And so, and then so to the bane of the cellists <laughs> today is that uh, he added this harder, much more difficult section. One thing I, I do at my concerts is that regardless of how um, common the piece is, um, I love talking to the audience because I, I always thought that you know the, the classical stage can be very it can be very cold. So um, my favorite thing to do is to talk to the audience, and then I. Um, I give a little tidbit of what they're about to hear, um, regardless of it. So it, with every piece on the program, I'm going to say something to the audience, a little bit of the uh, biography of it or some interesting thing to listen for. So on Sunday, it's, I think it's going to be a really exciting program. We have some really great musicians. The caliber of these musicians are one of the best I've played with uh, because they're all principals in their own uh, part of the orchestra. And so when we collaborate and come together, it's just going to be really exciting to perform all these works for you. And um, audiences of all ages will enjoy it.